Hi there and welcome to Learn A-Level Biology for free with Miss Estrick. In this video I'm going to be going through speciation. So if you are new here then just click subscribe so you don't miss out on any of the latest videos. So just to recap first of all on what you would have learnt in topic 4 already because this is actually in topic 7 for AQA that is to do with variation, competition and evolution. So within a population there will always be competition for resources or it could be um, just natural differences in survival rates depending on disease and predators and this results in natural selection and that is only possible because within every single population there will be a wide variety of phenotypes and the phenotype is the physical characteristic that you see but the actual definition is linked to the fact that it is caused by or determined by both the genetics and environmental factors. So the primary source of genetic variation is mutations, but you do get some variation from meiosis, and I'll link my video here so you can see how meiosis introduces variation. And also it's random which two gametes fuse every time. So that's how we get the variation. And each time there will be some individuals who have a phenotype that gives them the selective advantage against whatever current selection pressures there are within their habitat or their environment. So whether that's a particular predator or a new disease or competition. And the individuals who have those phenotypes giving them the selective advantage are more likely to survive. And because they're more likely to survive, they're more likely to be able to produce more offspring and therefore they are passing on their alleles and these will be the favorable alleles which are determining the favorable phenotype so as a result you'll get this change in allele frequency and that's what you can see in this diagram over here our current allele frequency and that is the um, number of each different allele um, out of the total so proportion and we can see that after natural selection, the final population, we have a different allele frequency because we've lost the yellow and orange alleles and we've got more of the red alleles. So this is also called differential reproductive success. And that's because only certain individuals are likely to reproduce and cause these changes in allele frequency within a gene pool. So the types of selection, there's three types of natural selection stabilizing directional and disruptive now i'm not going to go through stabilizing and directional because i have covered that in an earlier video and i'll link that up here the reason that's in an earlier video is it's topic four content disruptive selection is topic seven content because it leads to the process of speciation so disruptive selection is this top graph and this is where the red is the original population and the blue is after many generations of reproduction. And in disruptive selection, a change in the environment, or it could be a new predator, new disease, or it could be some physical separation or accumulation of mutations, um, means that the two extremes are now the selective advantage to have those alleles. And therefore, over many generations, you'll start to see that the two extreme traits become more popular or more common even in the population. And the middling trait is lost. Now, if this continues over even more generations, eventually no individuals will have this middling trait and you'll end up with two completely separate populations and that is when you've created two new species so that's what we're going to be looking at speciation which is the creation of new species so it occurs when one original population of the same species become reproductively isolated and what that actually means is those two populations can no longer breed together and there's different reasons why that might be the case and we'll come to that later what this means though is in those two populations they'll be accumulating differences in their gene pools and that is because over many generations 
they'll have slight different changes in their allele frequency. They also might be accumulating different mutations within those populations. And over many, many generations, it will get to the point where these two separated populations are now so genetically different that they are unable to interbreed to make fertile offspring. And therefore that means they are now two different species. So that is what we mean by speciation. The creation of a new species is where one species, the original population splits and those two isolated, those reproductively isolated populations over many generations become two different and two new species. So the reasons that these populations can become isolated are either geographical isolation, which is called allopatric speciation, or it could be changes in reproductive mechanisms. And this is called sympatric. So we'll have a look at these two in more detail. So allopatric is when they are separated geographically. And this is the only example that you learnt at GCSE. So this one is probably more familiar to you. So it could be that maybe there's been an earthquake creating a new mountain range, and there might be a new landmass from a volcano, and there might be a new river. Whatever the cause is, one original population of the same species it's now separated into two populations of the same species, but geographically they are separated, so they cannot reproduce together. Now within those two populations, there will be random mutations constantly occurring. And the population, because they are separated, will not be able to breed together. So these random mutations that are occurring will only be present in their particular population. So over time, they accumulate these different mutations. And if they're beneficial, then they'll be being passed on to their offspring. And therefore, they accumulate within the entire population. And eventually, over many, many generations, this accumulation of mutations means that their DNA base sequences are now so different and they're so genetically different, they would be unable to interbreed to create fertile offspring. And as we said, that means you now have two different species. Now, sympatric speciation, this is the one that's probably more new to you. This is when the two populations are geographically in the same location. So they can physically touch, however, they aren't reproducing together for some reason. And this is because of differences in their behavior. So sympatric speciation is to do with behavior. Now, some examples of this could be that maybe they, one of the individuals developed a random mutation and that mutation has impacted their courtship ritual. And if they're now performing a different courtship ritual, even though they're in the same location, the opposite sex will not recognize their ritual and will not reproduce with them. And if you haven't watched my courtship video, I'll link it up here so you can find out more about that. It could also be a random mutation whereby the different um, separated populations and separated as in their behavior are becoming fertile at different times of the year. And this came up in one of the exam papers a few years ago where they talked about palm trees flowering at different times of the year. And then they asked why that meant over many, many generations, they eventually became two different species of palm trees. So bear that in mind, this can be applied to plants as well as animals, because different times of the year becoming fertile links to plants as well as animals. So then the impact of that is the same as it was for allopatric speciation. Because they now are either fertile at different times of the year or they don't recognize the courtship ritual the individuals in those two groups will not reproduce together therefore there'll be no gene flow and they'll be accumulating different mutations over many generations and once that's happened for enough generations that their dna is so different that they cannot interbreed to make fertile offspring you've now created two different species so the last bit of theory linked to this topic is the concept of genetic drift. And this is only relevant and important in small populations. 
Now it does happen in all populations, whether it's a big or small population, but it only has an impact on small populations. And what genetic drift is, is between a single generation, there will be a change in allele frequency. And that is because you don't see parents producing genetically identical offspring to themselves. There will be some variation between parents and their offspring. And we call that genetic drift because from your parental generation, the next generation down, there will be some slight differences in allele frequency. But it has to be a really, really substantial change in allele frequency for it to be classed as evolution. And in large populations, that would take many, many, many generations of genetic drift before it became evolution. However, in a small population, because there's hardly any individuals to start with, even the slightest change in allele frequency has a very big impact. And this is why small populations will go through evolution much, much more rapidly than large populations because that slight change in allele frequency every generation has a much bigger impact because there's fewer individuals in the population to start with. So that is it for speciation. I hope you found it helpful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up.